Hi everyone, it's Eric and welcome to another vlog video. Today I am really quite excited as the new Star Trek Into Darkness movie has just been released. And it's not going to be released for those of you in the US yet until uh, next week. which is about, So uh, you're going to have to wait until about a week. But I think just recently we had to, in the UK, had to wait about two weeks for, I think it was Evil Dead. Not as much of a big movie, I know, but I'm just saying generally, but uh, weak comparison. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be watching the movie today, and uh, as you can tell, typically I'm just going to be first giving you my impressions of what I thought of the previous movie in my house. And the movie's not going to start yet until about an hour and 30 minutes, so <clears throat> that's almost the entire movie's runtime I've got left until I actually go. So, uh, what I'm going to do in this video is basically, well, the, the start, this first section of the video, whilst I'm at home, is actually talk about what I thought of the first Star Trek movie, made direct by J.J. Abrams. Now, unlike what I did in my last vlog video, I was actually in the cinema talking about, uh, where I just come out letting you know what I thought of the movie, I'm actually going to have to walk back home and then let you know what I thought of the movie, because this video is actually being recorded on the Panasonic SD90, which is a camcorder I use to record all of my YouTube videos. And... Uh, I haven't got any review yet, in yet. I'm going to get the Xperia T in by tom well, not the Xperia T, the Xperia Z in by tomorrow, and hopefully I'll use that for a vlog. And, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to have to manage with my SD90. I can't switch from this to my HTC Desire S after this footage, so I'm going to come back home, then you pick up this camera again, and then record my final thoughts of the movie. But, let's quickly get on to the first movie. First movie, what I think? I really liked it. I was surprised, really. Because when people said that, uh, when they said Star Trek with Captain Kirk and Spock, well, for us, the generation of us that was actually grown up with Voyager, uh, well, a little bit of Voyager and stuff, we haven't really grown up with much Star Trek. The only Star Treks I really liked were the movies, The Next Generation, with Captain Picard, you know, uh, Xavier from X-Men, for those of you who are not too much into that sort of Star Trek series. But, uh, yeah, you know, those movies were great. I didn't care for that TV show. Voyager had some good episodes, but I wasn't really into Star Trek much. Just the movies, really, from uh, Picard, a.k.a. Xavier. But when this Star Trek movie hit, uh, you know, hit the scene, I was like, should I watch it this cinema? Then I was like, no, I'll watch it for the sake of it. But I actually watched it. I loved it. Thing is, when you hear Star Trek, you're like, oh, Star Trek. Unless you grew up with it, unless you grew up with it, the rest of us will be thinking, oh, Star Trek, you're kind of bored. You're kind of bored. I don't feel like putting it on. But this Star Trek was so good that literally when I put it on, it's like every time I watch it, it gets better and better. I loved everything about the movie. There was just a co odd little bit of nitpicks, but the main problem is the villain. I did not like the villain in the movie. Yes, he did some cool stuff like, you know, he destroyed uh, he destroyed Vulcan, the planet Vulcan, and he uh, killed Kirk's dad and stuff. Yes, spoilers, but after all these years, I'm pretty sure you guys must have seen it if you're watching this vlog. But yeah, you know, that basically happened. He did some good villainy stuff, but... At the end, he was just a stale villain. It's like when I was actually watching him, I was bored. I wasn't like, okay, when are they going to show this villain again? You know, I really want to see more of him. Not at all. So, I wasn't keen on the villain, but J.J. Abrams, if you watch the trailer, looks like he's really worked on that because Sherlock Holmes himself is actually going to be the villain. And just by judging by the trailer, I am more rooting for him than I am for uh, Spock and Kirk and the rest of them because I've seen six episodes of the Sherlock, BBC Sherlock TV series, and each is an hour and a half. So, it's like I've seen him in six movies. So,. I really am looking forward to watching him in this role, because seriously, this, you could recognize his voice, but he sounds very menacing and very sinister. So, I'm going to stop the recording of this now, and I'm going to go watch the movie of Star Trek Into Darkness, then I'll come back home and then pick up the camera again let you know my thoughts. Okay, so I am back from watching Star Trek Into Darkness, and before I do kick this off, I'm just going to say, I forgot to mention, I haven't trimmed this yet, and I'm going to do it. I've just uh, been a bit lazy recently, so I promise next time I show up on camera, that will be cl uh, cleaned up. Anyway, on to the, my thoughts of Star Trek Into Darkness. Now, I saw it today, and by the advantage of seeing it today, uh, apart from all the other days, is that today I'll be get to see it on the biggest screen without 3D. Uh, so I'll be able to see it in 2D. Every other so every other day, I'm gonna have to if I want to watch it on the bigger screen, it'll have to be in 3D. And this movie was post converted. Post converted is cheap tat. I don't you don't want to waste your money on that. So this way I've saved money on 3D that I did not even want to see in the first place. So win situation for me right there. Anyway, so uh, when I went into the movie, um, it started off with a very very well. It was like a good opening scene. A good op good opening scene. Very good opening scene. And it's after that the movie actually started slowing down. Now, this is where one of the problems actually lies. Uh, with the first Star Trek movie by J.J. Abrams, 
Yes, there is some, some slow parts for character development, but that's those slow parts, I could watch those over and over again. I could watch those along with the whole movie from start to finish. And I've already done that. I've watched that movie that movie more times than I can count. And I could watch that the start and everything over and over again. But this one, I can tell that if I was to watch this movie when it came out on Blu-ray, and if I was to watch it, I would probably most likely want to skip it at when it so slows down at a certain point. It's not like something that I feel like I'm going to have to constantly see. So, yeah, that means that uh, replay or re re rewatchable value is lower on this one because you're going to want to skip something, when, whereas on the other one you don't want to skip anything. And after that, when they did show Benedict Cumberbatch as uh, the villain, it was much better. And uh, as I've already seen the movie, my words will obviously be able to come out much better and, and stuff, but to all the special effects, everything was great. He was a, Benedict Cumberbatch was a great villain, and I'm gonna tell you, tell you something straight. He actually seemed a lot like, uh, to me at least, this is what Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock would be like if he was a villain, and if he had you know worked out more. He would be this guy right here in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. And that's what I really liked about it as well. Is like for, for people like us that have seen Sherlock, it's like you immediately like his character as soon as you see him. It's not like you need development to see uh, until you actually like him. You just like him immediately. For those that have not seen Benedict Cumberbatch and Sherlock, they'll obviously need that sort of character development on his side. But me personally, I was like into his character as soon as I saw him. And one thing I was worried about was in the trailer, it looked like you were voting for him. It's like I was like, it's like you know I'm voting for the bad guy, and it's like who's Kirk, who's Spock, you know Benedict Cumberbatch, Sherlock, you know he's the one that I've seen in about looks like is what seems like six movies, and I've seen Star Trek with uh, Kirk and Spock and them lot only in one. So therefore, I'm more like you on Sherlock's side, and he's got a decent reason as well, you know why he's uh, the bad guy. But when you actually watch the movie. And when he starts doing thing, doing things, first is on his side, but then about halfway through the movie, he does some really brutal stuff that I was like, I'm really liking Benedict Cumberbatch, but he is freaking me out. And what he actually did at one point, and I was watching, like I said, on screen, on uh, in the cinema, on the biggest screen, and not only biggest screen, the loudest sort of audio system. And I say it's second in place with IMAX. And seriously, the things that go on and with that enhanced sound and the biggest screen. They really took like extra effect on me right there, and it's like you like you like you that was brutal what he just did. And tell you this, and speaking of brutal, this is the most violent Star Trek movie I have ever seen. I don't think I've even heard of Star Trek being this dark before. Really, I haven't. So I'm very very glad that it was darker. Uh, that it has some really good action sequences in it, and yeah, overall the movie was very good. It did slow down a bit. It's got that sort of many sort of aspects that's like, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to rewatch this all over and over and over again. But for the most part, I really enjoyed it. And Benedict Cumberbatch as the villain, they do focus more on the villain as well. Whereas in the first one, they barely focused on him. And when he showed up, you didn't really care. You know, he's like more of a very boring villain and nothing to do. But, uh, yo, Benedict Cumberbatch, he's really got motivation and I really like what he does. And he's loved, his character takes a lot of twists and turns. And overall, yeah, I really like this movie, but I'm going to have to, unfortunately, tell you one of the things that I did not like about this movie, and that could be, like, the thing that kills the movie for some, and that is the ending. This movie, I loved it a lot, I really, really did like it, but the downside is the climax. Well, I, I saw an action scene at the end, and I was like, yo, this action scene is great and stuff, but I didn't think this action scene was like a climax kind of action scene. I thought that this is going to be one of the action scenes, then we'll get a climax or something like that. We don't get a climax. We really don't. It's like when I was watching it, I was like, what, it just ended? How can that be, you know? With all, with all this stuff going on, how can it just end just like that? That Where's the logic in that? It makes no sense. And there was, and there was also one, op one thing I thought would happen in the movie that would work very well and set it up very nicely for the third movie, but they didn't do that. And that is something I might tell you in a separate vlog video, a separate video. But I'm not gonna tell you tell it to you in this one. This is I'm trying to keep the spoiler free. But something like, but that there is something that happens in the movie, and I was thinking, what happens if they went that way, similar to what they did with the previous movies, and then you know continued it in the next one? But I'm not gonna tell you what that is. And there is many references in this movie. Well, not many, but there are a few really key references that I definitely noticed. And I don't watch the old Star Trek movies. I've seen some people review them and stuff. But uh, when I really noticed these references in the movie, I was like, wow. And they actually reverse a couple of roles as well. And the, this movie does take quite a few twists and turns, and the relationship between Spock and Kirk is fantastic. 
And Benedict Cumberbatch in the trailer actually seemed like he overshadowed the uh, rest of the the rest of the characters. Like you know that he was so good of a villain that it's like you, you're on his side and not the good guys. Well. J.J. Abrams really did a very, very good job of actually illustrating the sort of tragedy of what was going on and the consequences of uh, people's actions. And uh, Kirk did do some stupid things at times, to the point where I was thinking that, come on, I thought you were past this by now. But he actually still did some stupid things, which at some points made me hate his character at some points when I was supposed to like him. I did have qu quite a bit of hate for him as well. Because he just didn't listen to uh, the people like, giving, him advice, giving him advice quite a lot of the times. Which was something that really irritated me, but I'm getting off track. Here. I'm, I'm getting off track here. The, uh, yeah, but basically, yeah, the stuff that was going on it was tragic. Heck, I was even getting teary-eyed at one point. Literally, I did, and a couple of tears actually. Well, I think it was, yeah, about a couple of tears that came up from there, and one that came from here. It was like very sad. It was very sad what they did later on. It really does deliver when you see everyone's reactions and stuff. And J.J. Abrams really does put some twists into the Star Wars movies that you don't really think would happen in a Star Wars movie, and that you haven't seen happen in Star Wars movies yet, so I'm very glad that with those twists that he was taking. The main problem for me, though, was, uh, like I said, the climax. More like an anti-climax. Seriously, it didn't even seem like there was a proper climax in this movie. And that really killed it for me. I would have given this movie an 8 or 9 out of 10, but seeing as the climax was a big letdown, I'm going to have to give it, unfortunately, a 7 out of 10. This movie, I did like it, but I was I was like, no, it can't just end yet. When it was about to end, I was like, no, it can't just end yet. I was like, oh, did I, did I, uh, did, am I missing some movie? A chunk of this movie is missed out. I was like, I paid full price for a ticket, and I expect full, a full movie. I think two hours for this film was actually quite, uh, you know, was like, you know, a bit too short. They had to make about 15, 20, heck, even an extra 30 minutes long, and I would still be invested. I'd still watch it. And I'd be like, wow, this is amazing. It needed that extra time. It's because it did not have that extra time that it's lost points. And the first movie is still better because I can watch that movie over and over again. As I said, I've seen it more times than I can count. And I could still watch it again. I like Every time I watch it, I like it a little bit more. It was great. This movie is great, but it was a letdown due to the lack of a climax. And, uh... Yeah, so, overall, I think that's pretty much it. I can't say much else, because I don't want to spoil anything for you. And, uh, yeah, this movie for you guys that are in the US will be out about a week later, whereas it's already out for us in the UK, so those of you in the UK, enjoy the movie. And now, one other thing I would like to touch on quickly is the humour. Now, the humour in the first Star Trek movie was great. In this one, I'd say it's, it's got many of those times where it's great. However, the odd time here and there, you're like, that humour was not as strong as what it was in the previous movie. But what I'm actually shocked by is people saying cheesy humour. The che the humour is probably not as uh, clever as it was in the previous movie, but I didn't at all, at all think it was cheesy. I thought it was very clever and still very well done. When you look at movies, because when you look at movies like uh, The Expendables 2, the humour in that was absolutely cringeworthy, and that took a lot of points off the movie. Because the references and the kind of jokes they were trying to put in that movie were so kindergarten that even someone like someone younger than me can come up with those crappy references jokes. So Expendables 2, they sucked. However, some critics were saying great references and great jokes. I was like, really? Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but really? I thought we all we or I thought us guys at least knew what uh, a good joke is and good references. In this movie, they do it very very well. And uh, the jokes and stuff they do, they did get a laugh out of me, and the audience that was uh, with me in the cinema as well. So, I don't see how they can say the humour is cheesy. It, it was not cheesy humour. Uh, like I said, if they think uh, humour is cheesy, then say Expendables 2 or something like that is cheesy. This didn't have cheesy humour. This made me feel right at home with Star Trek humour from the last movie and stuff. And just one more thing I want to touch on before I actually close this vlog is that people complained a lot about the lens flare in the first Star Trek movie. To tell you the truth, I had no idea, uh, well, the lens flare didn't really come up to me as a problem or anything at all. I only really became aware of it when people were mentioning it when I was reading some reviews and, st and stuff uh, about Star Trek Into Darkness, and people talk about the lens flare in the first movie. Uh, even now that I'm more aware of it, it does not bother me. I noticed there is in there a bit too much sometimes, but I thought it made the movie feel look a lot more polished. And in this movie, they do illustrate it less. They do integrate it less into the movie. So therefore, it's not going to be too much in the movie. So for those of you that do not like the lens flare in the first movie, it's all right. They're not going to. They haven't put used too much of it in this movie. I thought they used it just the right amount. So that's my review of uh, or my impressions. Uh, and yeah, you can say a review of uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Overall, it's a good movie. Not as good as the first one. However, the villain really kicked butt, and he was one of the best parts of the movie. 
And I can't even say he's probably one of my best villains, probably in my top 10 list. He was very brutal, and Benedict Cumberbatch really, uh, about, I think it was three quarters into the movie, really started to freak me out at, at one point when he did, uh, when he started doing some things. But yeah, he was a great villain, and I'll enjoy watching him again as uh, when, when the movie comes out on Blu-ray. I really would enjoy watching him again, and him, yeah, if, as the villain, I could just watch him all day. He was, and I could talk to you all day about what I thought of uh, his about uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as the villain. He really was one of the stars of the show, and Spock was fantastic in this movie as well. Kirk, he was good. He was good, but his car and uh, Chris Pine, who plays him, did great. It's just his character. I thought that you know he should be past some of these stages right now, but because uh, you know he didn't seem as captainy as I thought he would have been after watching the first movie. I thought he would probably have uh, matured or you know learnt a lot more than that, but he did still do some silly things. And excuse me for the little weird camera shots right there I'm just doing, but yeah, he uh, really did do some things which I was not happy with, and I was like, no, I don't like the fact that you're doing that. Okay, so I've rambled on enough. I'm not going to talk anymore. You guys definitely go watch the movie. Thank you guys very much for watching this vlog. And uh, next month I'll be watching Man of Steel in the c in the cinema, and uh, I'll most likely do a vlog similar to this. So. Stay tuned for that video, and in the meantime, I hope you enjoy the other videos I've got coming up. Please stay tuned to the channel, and I'll see all of you in the next video.